This is the Balkan Adventures podcast. Everyday life and experiences in the Western Balkans. This podcast relies entirely on supporters who help to keep us sponsor and advert free to our community at patreon.com. You can pledge as little as $1 a month with early access to content and free giveaways. You will find a banner to our Patreon community on our website at balkanadventures.co. Thanks for helping us develop the podcast. Hi, and welcome to the Balkan Adventures podcast. I'm David Bailey, an Englishman in the Balkans. Well, it's been quite some time since the last podcast, and that's mainly been due to, well, a bit of refocus for me. So I took a bit of a break, but I'm back now, recharged with a new look for the podcast. They're still going to be my rambling broadcasts, but I'll also be making as best an effort as I can to introduce you to some interesting people who are connected somehow and in some way with the Western Balkans. So let's crack on. On this episode, I talk to Jose Galagos from California. Jose, I hope I pronounced your name correctly. I think it was earlier this year that I was researching on YouTube and came across a video called Bitter Sweet Bosnia. Jose produced, filmed, directed and published the video, which had a real impact on me. I made a comment. I think I asked Jose that maybe we should meet in the future. Well, you do that, don't you? And link the video on my social media. Then, not so long ago, a message pops up from Jose saying he'll be in Banja Luka. I just had to meet him, so sat outside the Hotel Bosna in the centre of Banja Luka on a rather warm Wednesday morning. I was keen to find out more. My name is Jose Gallegos. I'm from San Francisco. Um, my family's from Mexico, so I'm first generation uh, Mexican. Uh, I was raised in the Bay Area, and it was during an interesting time where it was moving into tech. So I was basically saw how... Google and Facebook and all these tech companies kind of bursted in. And as a child, I was always fascinated by movies, films, stories, but I didn't have the confidence or the resources or funds to go to an art school or film school. So I did the next best thing, which was marketing. And went to San Jose State, hustled like crazy, got a lot of good internships, and worked for a couple tech companies. Um, but there was something missing. I felt like I, it, it wasn't fulfilling enough. And it was at one of, one of those tech companies that uh, they had an office in San Francisco and Belgrade. They asked me, hey, do you want to go to Belgrade? And I was like, oh, where, where, the fuck, where the fuck is this place? <laughs> um, okay, sure, why not? They're paying for my flight. I'm fresh out of college, so let's do it. So I went and... I was there for a month, no, two months. I was supposed to be there for a few weeks, but extended. And those two months changed my life because I knew nothing about this region. But what blew me away was the people, and I felt so connected to them. So as I came back to the States and everyone was like, how was it? I hate that question when you come back. It's like, how was it? You can't say that in a few sentences. So I decided I'm going to make a film. Um, not overthinking it, just simply to share it share with my friends and family. And I made my first film, which was called This is Serbia. What's that? And then we covered it. We covered it. Then she got, we got a little bit... To rest. To rest. Yeah. <laughs> what is this called? Kibanitsa. 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 I realized whatever I ate in Serbia, everything tasted way more rich in flavor. And that's because most of their produce comes from real farms that aren't adding pesticides or GMO. So everything you eat here will taste 10 times better. You mean you put him in a bed? <laughs> You're going to be a movie star. You're going to be in my movie. And, you know, I got pretty good traction from from uh, my friends, but it started to get a little little bit more bigger, and um, it got featured on one of the main broadcast stations in Serbia, and there I was on the homepage, and all my friends were, like, going crazy, and I was like, whoa. And then that's what... Uh, hit me, you know what, this could work. So a few weeks after, I quit my job, 
And I was very fortunate because I worked my ass off at this job. I was working like 13, 14 hours a day. So I did deliver good results and I was able to have a freelance contract. So I'm able to pay my money. I still get money as I travel. And that's what led me to continue to learn more about the, the rest of the region. And then that's when I decided, okay, next place I want to go is Bosnia. And came here for three months. And all I knew is that I wanted to share my experience um, about the people. And I remember just writing and writing and I struggled. I was like, I don't even know what I want to show, but it was all a process. But as I spent more time here, I realized the story here is that the people are quite incredible and and really down to earth. And because they've lost a lot, they also have their priorities about quality of life and family time. So after spending three months, I had over like 30 hours of footage, went back home. I was like, I don't know what the hell I'm doing. Like, I just knew that I, I uh, there was a story here and I just kept at it, kept at it, kept at it. And then that's how I created Bittersweet Bosnia. Georgette was my tour guide around the village. We would go explore the countryside and he would tell me about his favorite memories growing up. You definitely get a sense of the quality of life is great and easy going, but his biggest disappointment is the limited amount of career opportunities. He also introduced me to all his friends around the village. I was curious to learn about their perspective of Bosnia and what they plan for the future. Okay, okay. Samo nema posla tu. Ne, ne zaposlimo ga, nema posla. Young people can find a job. Ali se vidiš ovdje ovaj budućnost da ovdje na tržištu živiš ili možda negdje odeš. Pa gusto znam. What's your name? Ha? Nikola. Nikola. How old are you? Uh, koliko imaš godina? Uh, 11. You guys? What do you want to do when you grow up? Na bolje pa tak. Where do you want to travel? Serbia. Nema. You've met a lot of people when you've been here and you know you're, you're going off when we finish talking now to meet some Banja Lukarans if we call them that. You know you said I was so inspired to talk. I left my job. You gave up everything to pursue a passion. You know when you talk to people in the Balkans, young people in particular and you say you know I just left my job to do this. What is their reaction? Do they think you're? Do, do they think? Do they think you're crazy? Do they? Do they think that? How can you do this? Just I'm leaving my job. I'm going to go and do something. Are you fucking crazy? You haven't even. You don't really know much about films. You don't even know how to. You put the manual setting on on the camera. And I met a lot of people who told me like, you kind of have no idea what you're doing with your camera. I was like, yes, but I know that there's a purpose and there's a story, and that that's that's all I need. I felt that kind of sharing my story kind of also opened the conversation about what about you? What's your passion? What do you want to do? And I think it was a great moment of clarity for them and hopefully motivation to, you know, go after what they want. I can't say that everyone made a new leap of change, but I think it was good just to show that, especially for me, coming immigrant, there's nothing easy about my life, but that whatever you set your mind to and your passion and you make calculated risk but ultimately you just got to fucking make a risk this is the balkan adventures podcast in the film bittersweet bosnia how did you land on on the particular stories i mean some of it's urban some of it is rural and especially here to get rural stories it takes a bit of seeking out the people and then when you found the people who you know they, they might live away from a city but they're intensely private you know taking a camera into somebody's backyard is not only an immense undertaking but i would say a bloody scary one as well so how did you cope with those sort of pressures and more importantly how did you find the stories that you knew that you could film the first connection i made with bosnia was actually i had a friend who lived in serbia he was he was born near shevanitsa and he said hey why don't you go stay with my family and you can get some footage there 
So he introduced me and like all Balkan families, they take you under and let stay and very hospitable. And feed you. Yes. And <laughs> I'll drink you. It was a bit awkward, especially I'm not, this is all new to me. I've never done interviews. I don't have any, any formal training, but I just kept saying to myself, just keep it natural. Like the way you talk to people, just kind of do that. So that little town, there was some rumors going around that I was a spy. And why are you doing this? But I think before I jump the gun and say, I'm going to record you, I first needed to build that relationship. And they needed to learn who I was and also, you know, get drunk with them, tell our stories. And then it became easier to, to kind of convey to them, hey, let's, let's talk, let's, uh, let's share some stories. And I was never super, like, intrusive. It was just more kind of telling genuinely that I just want to tell the world that you guys are good people because there's a lot of bad misconceptions about what this area is. This is the Balkan Adventures podcast. I went there for a week. It didn't work out and I had to come back again because I didn't get the right footage or I was too nervous to ask people. So just it takes time. It takes trust. With Sarajevo, I didn't know anyone. Stayed at a hostel. And the first month I was in Sarajevo, I was just around tourists. I think a month, like a few weeks in, I was like, wait, 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 I'm not, I'm not experiencing Sarajevo the way the locals do. I'm experiencing how foreigners and talking about the same things I would talk about at home. The great thing is that I became very close to the uh, employees there who were locals. And, hey, let me introduce you to someone. And they helped me out. And little bit by little opening relationships, starting with the same thing, same concept, just drinking, laughing, eating. And then they, they opened up. And then with my last stop, which was Banya Luka, I was actually at the film festival. And I was like, okay, I need to like connect with someone. Like, I'm not good at networking. And I remember I just was at the a filming party, kind of sneaked in. And I was like, I'm kind of fucking nervous. So uh, I just went to the open bar and just started. They didn't have any liquor and beer takes too long to feel anything. So I was like, I was just pounding wine glasses. And then I see, I was like, okay, I gotta look around. And then I see this guy standing by himself. I was like, all right, as they say, yeah, biga, fuck it. And I just went up to him and I was like, hey, I'm Jose. What are you, what are you here for? Or, or, and he's like, oh, I actually have a film screening here. See it tomorrow. Then we just started talking. So I went the next day to see his screening. He made a documentary about um, two blind girls who were learning how to snowboard. Actually, incredible story. And I'll share the link with you so you, can, so you can watch that. But anyways, I told them what I was doing. I was like, hey, I'm here, and I'm, I'm trying to make a film about Bosnia. And, and he was like, come to Banja Luka, stay with us, and I have a production studio, and you can, we can help you. I was like, okay. I was a bit nervous when I was on the train. I was like, something could go terribly bo- wrong, but I always have good faith in people. And they picked me up and just worked from their office. And, and it was great because they helped me a lot with the technical. Like, I didn't even know how to handle a camera. I was shaky, too. And they helped me in that aspect, to how to make it a film look more beautiful, more the technical part. But most importantly, they helped me understand their perspective, build trust, and... Um, share stories you know i look british even with my advanced age and people will say you know you're not we, we know straight away you're not one of us and in the years i've been here it's become more and more obvious that balkan people um compartmentalize others germans are always schwaber uh, the french they, they can they, apparently they can spend you know realize that there's a frenchman in the room at 100 meters i don't know how they do that but they seem to know who's who in the zoo and 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 they're happy with that because they can they can compartmentalize that and especially when it comes in this part of the country when you mention anybody that comes from the united states <gasps> american american but i really would like an honest answer about this you know mexicans you don't find people from mexico falling off the trees in bosnia herzegovina let alone the republic of serbska and when people say hey jose where do you come from because obviously i would assume sorry they think you're Spanish, and you go, I come from Mexico. There must have been some stunned looks. Yeah, yeah. It's always like, just shakes their head. Like, oh, okay, this is a first. Most of the time, I'm the first Mexican they meet. Are they full of inquisitive questions? Yeah, but if anything, they're really warm. They're actually really interested and fascinated. And here, I think it was in the 90s that Spanish soap operas were really big. And you'll be actually surprised of how many people can actually learn no Spanish. 
and they actually think Mexico is very cool and very interesting, and the, the language, the music, the women. The hats. <laughs> exactly. So it's actually very warm and receptive. I, you know, I, am, I was born in America, so I, you know, I am Mexican-American. But if I start off with American, it's, it's always really interesting because it's, the tone really changes, like, oh, okay, whatever. Usually when I go in taxis, I usually just say I'm Mexican so I don't get ripped off as much. And I remember one time in a taxi ride, I remember it's like, oh, Mexico, yes, good people. Ah, uh, America, oh, bad, bad, bad people. And I was like, thank God <laughs> I am brown and uh, I can kind of play around with my identity. I've taken enough of your time this morning and you've got to get off to another meeting. So here's the final one, which some people say, God, I wish I hadn't asked that. You know, I could have been prepared, but mate, you, you're not going to be an exception here. Without giving too much away, plans for the immediate mid and long term for you as a filmmaker this year has really tested me as far as like you know do i want to continue filmmaking my contract with my company ended a few months ago and then suddenly i had no money coming in and on top of that you know my family's business was also kind of going down to shit so i was like fuck i gotta like get my shit together and i had two choices i can you know i can work back at a tech company and make you know six figures, live a comfortable life, but I don't have that flexibility to invest. Or I can, you know, uh, just hustle my ass off. And that's something I've learned from, you know, my mother coming from immigrant backgrounds. Like, you, you got to work twice as hard and three times as hard. I just see myself like, wow, I was born in America. I had an education. I speak English. I built some skills. So uh, that kind of gives me the confidence to go on. So... Uh, in the two months of kind of kind of going crazy and uh, hoping everything would work out, I was able to land two clients, and it's the same skills that I've learned in marketing, which are um, content. And um, now my goal is to leverage this and create a basically start a marketing agency and kind of hire people who can help do the day to day, and I handle the, the client communication. And this uh, this agency is going to give me the the flexibility and the funds to continue to make more films. This is a long-term thing. This is going to be five, ten years. It's not an overnight success, but I'm very committed, and I, I definitely see signs, and I, and I feel that this is, every day I'm doing this, I feel like I'm doing the right thing, and it, and it excites me, and it, and, and it empowers me, and especially when I come around and, and, and to hear you know words from you, that, that just only pushes me harder. So um, I'm going to continue making more films about the Falcons, and continue to make more films about just people. It's all kind of played a perfect role. Jose Galagos from California talking to me about making videos in his own unique style about the world and at the moment about the Western Balkans. To find out more about Jose and the videos we talked about, please do check out the links in the show notes with this podcast. Well, that's it for this episode. I really do hope you've enjoyed it. And if you'd like to support the podcast and my blog and vlog too, please consider joining my Patreon community. So until next time, from here, near Laktashi in northern Bosnia and Herzegovina, please do stay safe. To find out more about us and where we live, why not check out our blog at anenglishmaninthebalkans.com. See you next time.